train the dogs. They were born trained. So when you go to a class, an eight-week class, and you proudly say, we taught our dog to sit, and we taught our dog to lie down, and we taught our dog to walk. Uh, I hate to tell you this, the dog was born laying down. Two weeks old, he began to sit, he could stand, and he began to walk. When he was with his mother, and his mother said, back off, she didn't ask him and get a treat. She didn't prevent him. She corrected him. If that dog tried to steal her bone or her food, uh, it got a correction. Not a please and thank you. Not say you're sorry. Uh-uh. It was a correction. All right. So, basically, a dog is born trained. When you get that dog at eight weeks old, it already knows everything it needs to do to be the breed it is. The problem with it is it comes into your house, into your home, and it doesn't speak English. So it's trying to learn by your actions. So if you bring this dog into your home and you turn it loose and let it run, what's the job description? Entertainment, okay? And it's silly and crazy and nuts. And then all of a sudden, at four months old, it's now a dog instead of a puppy, and you don't like it. Now we're hollering at it. Well, if you haven't taught what those words mean, why would the dog do it? So everything we do in here is according to the pack. According to what makes sense to the dogs or to the pack, because if we come right down to it, which has a smoother society, dog pack or our pack? Our society's crazy. If we paid more attention to our dogs instead of trying to teach them what we know, everybody would be better off. So everything here is according to what makes sense to the pack. Now each group thinks differently. They have different priorities. Each breed is a specialist. So when we understand what that breed was bred to do, we can better predict how that dog thinks and what its choices would be. So in knowing the breeds, you can pretty much predict how they're going to react. I got tickled on that video because you had the puppy over there tied pretty much like this, and I said, the puppy's afraid. Oh, he's not afraid of anything. So I went and put the weird glasses on. Well, no. He needs to have a little fear or he's going to go up to some big dog. Right. He, he has to learn to be respectful of those higher than he is. If you're that silly where you are a young little girl and you dress all up and you go into a biker bar, okay, good luck. You may be hot shot at home, but you start getting out into some certain situations, that isn't very pretty. So we need to teach them how to not only be this important little fish in your own pond, but how to go out into the big pond and still survive. We gotta teach them to be smart, adults, not playmates the rest of their life. Dogs are bred to work, not play. And they already know how to play. Now there's three natural corrections that a mother dog does with a puppy. She does not get them a treat. She does not choke them. She does not give them a time out. 
She does not put them in another room. She corrects them. She corrects in one of three ways. Now these are corrections. This isn't how she teaches. Correction just simply lets the dog know, or the puppy know, whether what he's doing is acceptable or not. A correction is like a speeding ticket. Okay. If you read that speeding, speed sign, and you still choose to speed, kind of chosen a speeding ticket. We don't like it, but it usually slows us down, especially if it's one of the heftier ones. Okay. So a mother dog corrects a puppy one of three ways. The first correction would be a growl. Now when we train in here, the growl is both the command and the praise. So you'll hear me say easy, good easy. Wait, good wait. It's that acknowledgement. It's not easy. You start doing that, you're giving the dog a choice. That is not a serious correction or a command. Easy. Knock that off. Enough. Wait. Sit. Down. Back off. That's mine. Those are commands. Not a request. Now, wouldn't you rather have somebody tell you what they want instead of hint at it? Instead of talk behind your back because you're doing it wrong? Anybody who has a job or who has ever worked for anybody knows that you want to know what's required. Not one day get the surprise, well, you haven't been doing your job. What do you mean? You gave me 100% job approval. You told me I was wonderful. Yeah, but... But you didn't teach me. Oh, well, bye. No. That's so many cases of rescue. So the next correction that a mother dog can do is a nip. This is a cue collar. The cue bone slides onto any collar. Three different sizes. This is the medium. This is the small. Okay. Just pressure. There's no working parts to it other than if you had a stone in your shoe, you step on it, you back away. It's pressure. You pull on the lead, huh, shucky darn. Oh, no, don't want to do that. An animal will back away from pressure. A horse, you put your leg into their side, they turn. So if I hold this lead and the dog understands it, there's pressure, he's going to come with you. Now, if the puppy pushes beyond that, there's a bite. Because we, we simulate exactly what the mother dog does, we have two collars on the dog. So if this collar is tied to something, and this collar is on a lead, and we pull these two collars, oh good, Kathy likes this. All right, that does not hurt, does it, Kath? Now if I pull on that, only humans pull into it. Only humans, and it's so funny, every time I show somebody this collar, that's what they do. And they'll just hold their arm tight. I said, isn't that uncomfortable? Yeah. Okay. Because humans don't want to be led. They don't want control. They'll pull against. They'll, they'll buck the system, right? It's our nature. Okay. So that's perfectly loose. If that's on there, you don't feel anything. So if this is tied to the wall. Oh, look at this. She knows how to do this. She's pulling at her. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, so if this is tied to the wall mm -hmm. and this dog is barking or this dog is wiggling or this dog is jumping around, I say, you, easy. Now we have a bite. 
When the dog behaves, we give them slack again. So when we look at this, that is teeth. Just like teeth. Yep. Now, it's really funny because there were many, many handlers a few years ago that were showing with the little ones. They put those on show leads and amateurs could beat the handlers. It's wonderful. We're still doing it. Yes. But Joan did it the smart way. She did her training, not used it in the ring. But there are big dog shows where you see a little bone on that handler's... On TV. On TV, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The first one... Um, uh, Susie up by Union Grove, she had one of my dogs, and I, the first, when we first started doing this, it was a little green Q-bone. She, I showed it to her, and she said, your dog walks on the lead so well. Well, there's a reason, so I got the thing out. She took that away from me, put that on her little winning Norwich Terrier. She took Best in Show that day, so the Best in Show pictures of this dog was a little green Cuba. It didn't even match her like lead. <laughs> it looks like a bow. Um, so the big Yukonuba show, she had it on there too. Um, there was a dog in England that won big time. They always showed her that on. Um, it, it was funny because there were people then that were threatened, so they protested. So it was labeled to be like a pinch collar. So of course you can't train in the ring. They can use a choke chain, but not, I, I don't understand. But anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, so anyway, the size of the bone necessary is determined by the attitude of the dog. There are many Jack Russells that need a lot of attitude adjustment. The difference is the space it takes, I mean, the, the space it covers. So when you look at the size of the bigger one and the smaller one, there's a lot of questions. I get a lot of private emails, so I'm, ta I'm selfishly taking this time to, um, to do this. The smaller ones are shorter. The posts are shorter. Unless you're pulling on this, there is no correction. So it just goes on to a regular collar, a quick-release collar as well as... Um, just can't be a rolled collar. In little... Um, show leads. You can actually take a rubber band and hold that in place. And you have power steering. Power steering. Um, when I first met Joan, I had the prototype. It was, <laughs> I had taken Play-Doh Play <laughs> to make the mold. <laughs> and then I poured it with resin and it was, it was pretty rough. And I said, I can have that dog walk in, what I say, 20 minutes? 15 minutes, and I think it took 20. No, you said 10 minutes. 10 minutes. It took 20. Took 20. And I worked on it for eight weeks. <laughs> and everybody stayed to watch because I was supposed to be the expert. And here comes this gallon. It's a dog I couldn't train for eight weeks. 10 minutes. Everybody that stayed was able to walk that dog. Yeah. Got my attention, folks. <laughs> but then she took that one and wouldn't give it back. So, you know, I always lose them. But what was the, what was the difference in the theory, Joan? Well, what we did was what uh, was always done. We just walked around and corrected our dogs. Until uh, yeah, 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 that's what you did. did. Yeah. What, what did you want and which one did you okay, want to know Okay, the difference about? in the method is this I method, tied... I tied your little dog yeah. to my briefcase. See, that dog walked around my leg. Yeah. It, every time I yeah. moved this foot, that dog was right, right on your leg, leg like a growth. And she, I couldn't get yeah. rid of him. Yep. Yep. So by teaching the dog where he was supposed to walk, Joan had walked him, but then she was trying to correct him for doing what he understood he was supposed to do. That made him cling even more. Stop. The secret to success Good is stop. teaching that dog to work away from you. So when these dogs are tied to the wall, stop. you don't have to go Good back. Stop. 
Julie can say, tell Otis, I'll be right back, get up and leave, and that dog stays there. Because if he tries to pull, he corrects himself. In a service dog, you need that dog that is so steady, so right on steady, you can't have that dog desperately trying to get to you if you go into the doctor's office or you, you need that dog patient. When you want or need a dog, we tend to teach that dog to be right on our side, to be right next to us all the time. The problem with it is we begin to share the same bubble. Okay, Stephen, let's do this. So you and the dog become one. That sounds wonderful. But then you can't even go to the bathroom. Nobody else can do that. So the dog is left not whole. And you aren't either. And it's even more desperate if something happens to the dog, here you are. There's got to be some objectivity. So we connect the dog on a more appropriate basis. Lacey doesn't want to be away from you, but by tying her with that cue bone, you're, she's actually correcting herself if she pulls to get to you. By having Kate come over there, you're showing her you can pet other dogs. She doesn't have to feel threatened. By her being tied there, I can come up here. Hi, how are you? Tell her to be easy. Easy, Lacey. There. How hard is that? Not hard at all. <laughs> when you're a person who needs a dog, the last thing you want to do is correct the dog for wanting to be with you. <laughs> when you're developing an appropriate relationship with a dog, you establish that's normal. If Julia takes that dog into a restaurant, she can't have this dog up moving around every time the person comes by. So we teach those manners at home. So we can use them when we go out. And you don't have to be the bad guy. Because the last thing you want to do with a dog that you want to be your emotional support dog or, or service dog or what, assistance dog or whatever, that first of all, that dog's got to be calm. Because if it's not calm, you can't take it anywhere. If that dog is protective of you, it's a good thing if you can control it. If it's a bad, it's a bad thing if you can't control it because you can't even take the dog out. Then, if you can't go without that dog, you're home. He's shaking. Come on. Get up here. Now, he was protected. He was helped. He wasn't taken out and really socialized in the right sense of the word. And for that reason, at this point, he's a lot of dog. Yeah, you need to back up. Easy. The cure for the artist is the same thing as it is with Diva. Because they're both aggressive. Aggressive. The definition, my definition of aggression is any behavior that you cannot easily control. I'd rather deal with this aggression than I would that aggression. That passive aggression is so difficult. Because easy. Good boy, Otis. Good, easy. I don't have to yank him away. If I've got a good dog out here, easy. He learns to tolerate. They actually now play. Good boy, Otis. Good boy. It's up to me to tell him he doesn't have anything to worry about. Kate, Kate, back off. Good dog. Hi, Otis. What do you think? Good boy. Good boy, Otis. Now, 
A dog like this, we can talk to Julie about that. What's the first thing you do when you get worried about him? Pull him right in next to you. And then you pull him away. If every time a child walked up to somebody and you yanked them away, what would that child think? That other people are bad. This dog was pulled away from situations. Why would he like other dogs and other people? And sadly, now that he's 180 pounds, <laughs> it's a problem. Come on, Alice. Good boy. The beauty of this is, you easy. Otis learned a long time ago, when he was a baby, this was the way it was. So as a baby, Otis learned this. It wasn't practice because he's being shown. He's only got three points to go. But as a show dog, what good is he when he lacks confidence? He's not good at all. Thank you. Can't perform. Good boy. We start out teaching the dog to behave off lead. He's working on lead. I'm just not holding it. Good boy, Otis. Come on, Otis. Wait. Beautiful. Wait. Look at you. You wait. Good job. Come on, Otis. Good job. You easy. Hi there, good to see you. Good to see you. Good dog. You wait. Good dog. Come on. Now I carry money. His money. I don't necessarily share it. He's just hopeful. I'm not going to bribe this dog. He's got to work for me. Because he knows what to do. I'm doing it. Yes. Wait. Hey. You better wait. Hi there. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. You wait. Good wait. Yeah, you big goofy dog. I'm gonna feed you. You know good dog? I got all the power in the world. The smallest child. The oldest person. Somebody in a wheelchair can control this big dog. Wait. Hey. You better wait. Look at how cute you are. Good boy. So we teach the dog to show. Hey, you better wait. Good. Good wait. Even with other dogs. Yes, I have you. Good dog. I know she's a pain in the neck. Now, when all you do is take a dog through its paces, <laughs> you think you can get away, short man. You say, wait. Good. It's a relationship. You see. Now, one of the problems with Otis is, of course, when there's other dogs. This is socialization. The dog's trained. Easy. Good. Hey, you. I had somebody write to me when Hunter left. They wrote to me and they said, I'm really glad Hunter went as a pet instead of just a service dog. Just a service dog? Just a service dog. That's somebody in confirmation who sees no value in manners, sees only value in performance. I found it so sad. I tried to respond to her and I, I just, I, I just can't. I find it so sad. If that's truly the state, come on, oh, oh, she knows you're going. Good job. <laughs> now we don't walk next to him. I want him to be controlled at a distance. Easy. Good dog. Come on, Wait. 
Good weight. Tell him to be easy. Easy. Easy, Otis. Good, easy. Easy. Good dog, easy. Good, easy, Otis. Good, easy. Easy. Okay, that's good. Good, you wait. Look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? Good boy. Easy. You wait. We need to teach this dog all of the skills before we get ready to go in the ring. Easy. Come on, Oz. Off. Oh, good off. I'm not going to have this dog pushing me. Off. It was cute with Diva. This is necessity. Off. Because he's got to get done showing and he's got to go home and be a pet. Off. Uh, nice. Wait. A stake in the middle of your backyard allows you to do this. Good weight. Now, Otis knows this, so we're going to cut the short. Once the dog understands this, easy. He'll work up close, at a distance. Good dog. Think about it. Good boy. Easy. We did it when he was a puppy. But when he goes out and shows, they do it different. Unless the show handler understands how to do this, they drag him around on a short, tight lead. Call that fine. Wait. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. With me. Now, with me is a calm um, position. Easy. It's also your recall. Good with me. Come over and see this neighbor lady. He wants to see you. Now, what's funny is he'd rather be with me. He feels secure with me. Now, he likes Julie. But if he came into a new situation, he wants strength. Otis, with me. Hey, with me. Otis, with me. Good. Wait. Excellent. Now this makes a dog able to be lived with. Come on, Otis. Come on. Good boy. Wait. Good dog. Look how cute you are. I know. Doesn't cost any more to feed a nice one than it does a crazy one. And this is a lot easier. So now, when we get rid of show, we have some show people in here today, which is really cool. How do you like that, Babs? Huh? Remember that? Uh huh. I should. Babs yeah, used to raise great days, so this is pretty cool. Come on, you Hi, hairy dog. Hi, Otis. Hairless dog. He's hairy. When they get stressed, oh my gosh. This is my training confirmation lead. It's a shoestring. Now, when we put this on a slip, it actually is really a bite. But it's the tiny, excuse me, tiniest little cue bone on there. What's the pressure? He understands it. Good dog. Power steering. Get up here. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Wait. Pretty. Look at how cute you are. Easy. Wait. Isn't that pretty? Good. <laughs> Wait. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Good. Wait. You wait. Wait. Good. Wait. 
The dog will keep that lead loose. Good. 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 Nice. Hey, you wait. Good. Woo! Got ears and everything. You bet. That's where bunnies come in. Squirrels. You went to the squirrels? What about squirrels? What happened? He got a squirrel. Julie, Saturday. it was her favorite squirrel, I guess. <laughs> no, I just... It was a squirrel. I still wait for you. Since he's... Oh, I couldn't really grab him. This is kind of weird. Otis has been coming on Wednesday, staying till Saturday for the last couple weekends. It's doing him a world of good. And so I said, is he changing at home? And she said, yeah, he is. But he got a squirrel. Well, he's feeling good enough about himself that now when he comes, he's wagging his tail all the time. Now he hit his stupid tail on the kennel. So now he's going to spend his time in the hand. But this is off-duty. That's enough. No different than the service dogs. There needs to be a point where they're off-duty. Good. Here you go. Here you go. Good boy. Wait. Now, lots of confidence. Good boy. All right, now you're on this side of it. Oh, come on, dog. Good boy. No, he's good. Good boy, I'll just give him a pop. Don't drag him. And good job. Lots of praise. Good dog. Now, if you notice, the big problem is not the dog. The big problem, good dog. The big problem is teaching the person how to do it. Okay, now don't look at him. You're in the you're in the ring. Good dog. Good dog. I don't need anything. Good boy. Nice. Good job. Oh, somebody doesn't like the mommy. Very nice. Good boy. Just tell him to wait. Wait. Good prayer. Good job. Thank you. Much better. Now, Julia used to travel with a handler. Didn't look like that, did it? No. No. I got a dog that they show wire terriers and ear heels. And they now, you want to walk the dog? Do you feel like it or not? Like yeah. it. Good dog. Little is easy. No, they don't want to kick any of the fire out. That's because they correct them instead of teach them. Well, it's wrong. They use school. They don't use corrections. It's terrible. Now look at this. I love this. Right. So when the dog is taught, all we have to do is hand the lead to somebody and teach them. This requires a handler to confidently stand up, say the words. Oh, we're going to do that next. <laughs> Therein lies the problem. You're fine. Why do you keep running into me? Huh? Okay. 
Maybe you said I missed it. Is the, is the cue bone, it makes sure it gets the dog at a certain place. Now, when I get to the, this point, when that line tightens, wait, that's a Wait. Okay, when that tightens, it puts pressure wherever it is. Wait. Now, the nice thing about wait. this, hey, hey, you, wait. You're fine. Good. You know, guys? Yeah. 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 Um, Wherever that pressure is, he knows it's kind of an end. It doesn't have to be. The beauty of this is it's not on the trachea. It's on the side, usually. And that's for dogs that are small, um, who have collapsed tracheas or a problem with that. The you know, correction comes from either side. Okay. Now, you're very confident. You're very happy, right? <laughs> nice, loose lead. Walk like you know where you're going. Good job. Straight line, there you go, good dog. See how she shortened the lead up? That's a habit. That's pretty good, she's got a dang one She's down. getting it, I've been nagging at her for long enough. She's getting pretty darn good again now. Wait, good dog, no matter Lots more talk. Move it, you got a long leg. Easy, good dog, go the other way, that's beautiful. Nice. And halt. Wait. Step in front of him. You're, the, you're in a dog show. Wait. You wait. Now give him a little tension on it. There you go. Wait. That steadies him. Don't eat my Kleenex, dog. Wait. Wait. Oh, stop it. Wait. Here. Good. Now thump him on the side and go around this right. Backwards. Good. Good job. Big steps. Big steps. None of them little steps. Give them a pop. There you go. That's it. Nice. Bigger. Bigger steps. There. Oh, look at those long legs. Man, if I had knees like that, I'd show you. Wait. Wait. There you go. Wait. You wait. Now that's a kind of a correction, really. It's fine. No, it doesn't. That little tiny thing well, think about the finer. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of crust there. I've worked lots of dogs on this one. Good. Good. Anybody else want to try? Why did the dog act one way with me and one way with Julie? First of all, she knows or he knows Julie, so that's normal. Second of all, when we move lacking confidence, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves, we move inhibited, what's the message we're sending? So if, if Julie was the teacher and she walked into a room full of children, would those kids take her serious? Not like that. I walked into the room. Good dog. This is leadership. In order to be above a dog, now this is a really great dog because he's so, I mean the picture is so huge. If you don't come into this with confidence, this dog's afraid to kill things. We're over what? Well, on yeah. up to wild boars. <laughs> On up to patrolling your property. Not that though. A great day is. Oh, that okay, the breed. Yeah. So if we think about what the dog is bred to do, this is a heck of a dog. They hunt those feral hogs with them. Well, that's what they're bred to do. Is hunt wild boars. Okay. So if you're a guy walks around armed to the teeth willing to take on a big project and your leader is are you going to listen to him? No. You want a leader that oozes. Then you can trust him, right? Alright, what kind of leader are you, Chris? You're learning. You're getting better. When you first came in, you were like this. You were holding, trying to hold the dog, 
You didn't know what to do. No, but it was truly a lack of confidence. Now, yeah, it was a new class. You didn't know what was going on. But you know what? You walk into any situation, it's new. Leader is a leader. What kind of leader were you, Julia? When you came? You weren't a leader. No. You wanted a friend. Yeah. Somebody's got to be in charge. There's no equals. I will tell you, Julie has improved so much. What she doesn't like is to get up in front of a bunch of people. Guess what? That's life. Joan always was a, a leader. But at some point, when I first knew her, she wasn't a fair leader. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. Sure. So when uh, I have great admiration for Joan, because I first proved to her that I knew what I was doing. She, she knew that. Okay. Over the years, lots of years, way years, she brings me dogs that she thinks are going to challenge me. I've never failed. <laughs> no, I think I can't do anything. What do I do? It, it, it's either put them down yeah. or yeah. let her see if she thinks they can be helped. Yeah. They can all be helped. Yeah. Because if you're just teaching a method, but you're not worrying about what you're coming across as, we're blaming everything on the dog. If the dog already understands the behavior, it's lack of communication. It's not a problem with the animal. So the communication is everything. This is a foreign speaking guy come to work for you. So he comes into my company, he doesn't have a clue what I'm saying to him. And I'm upset with him because he makes a mistake. Now, Mary actually is a good leader. But her expectations are so low. <laughs> she is selfish enough, she doesn't let that dog treat her badly. But she doesn't use it in enough places. So the dogs are taken out of the shower, which is good. Nothing wrong with her dogs, but they're not socialized as a companion. So therefore, she's limited what she can do with them. Right? Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this isn't criticism. This is just an assessment. How about Ruby? She enjoys her dogs. She loves her dogs. Sometimes she's a little inconsistent. A little, yeah, while I was being kind, um, a little bit unfair because we had it the other day. I love it because Ruby will argue with me and I always prove right. <laughs> because watching is always easier than doing. You can watch an inconsistency. So, what was it the other day you were saying something? You were saying here in the obedience. And I said, you can't, you can't get angry with the dog. You do it all the time. She didn't even realize, sitting in that wheelchair, she says, here, and the dog is to come beside her. Well, how does the dog know? On videotape, it's really nice because... How about Kathy as a leader? Kathy is a leader. Yeah. Except sitting next to the dog. When she gets up with the dog, I hand her dogs all the time. She does wonderful. But sitting in the chair... She melts into this little puddle of soft. I said inconsistent. Well, no, what it actually is, Kathy, in the military, they stole away your toy part. We actually have the ability to be all of those different temperaments. And you were denied being a toy. We all have some toy. Your innocence is taken. The dog gives you the ability to go back to that little toy piece that's still in there and be soft. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. I just need to keep her from going so far into the toy world. <laughs> Kate gives you the ability to be soft. We have to recognize we have all of those different temperaments within us, just like the wolf. They, they can guard, they can lead, they can keep track of, 
they can play, they can greet, they can be suspicious, and they can stay on task. We have all the same abilities. But when you've lived some of your life tough, the toy department is kind of closed for a while. You need to be able to go back and revisit toy. On the other hand, if you've lived in the toy department your whole life, you need to revisit uh, some of the tougher stuff. <laughs> Ruby, you don't have to worry about the toy department. <laughs> <laughs> Sue has the right idea. She gets frustrated. She doesn't have enough support. It's all right. Babs, Babs and I spent so many hours together. Babs can teach his class. I'm so glad she gets a chance to see Otis when she comes. Oh, yes, he's beautiful. Babs used to have great days. How, how many points has he got? Well. Oh, he's got yeah, close to his finish for them. He just needs three singles. Yeah, he's close to his finish. Oh, he's a major stuff? He's got a major. Oh, I thought he hit, okay. I thought he was saying he Oh, he's beautiful. He's a beautiful guy. <laughs> How about Mike? Not a lot of toy part. Got to revisit the toys now and then. We do occasionally. I know you do. But... When you've known a life that's tough, military does that for you. Weakness and vulnerability is scary. So we avoid it with like the plague. We have to go there. We're too tough for kids. We're too tough for dogs. We're tough. Harry forces you to be kinder. Because if you're tough on him, he quits you. So he's teaching you. Yeah, you are soft enough. Good teacher. He is a good teacher. Pauline, she kind of let Mike do most of the tough stuff. Harry forces her to step up. Kind of balance each other. Yep, that's right. Yep. Joy is learning very well with Z. You have to think about what you're doing. And then you get what you want. All of these dogs, Every one of them make us a better person. For that reason, we can proudly take this dog out into the world and know that he has our back. I can walk down pretty much any street. <laughs> and as long as he's well behaved, wait. I can be confident. If I feel threatened, I can get behind him. If I walked down the street with this dog, there would be some goofy people that would, oh, I got a dog tougher than that one. You know, oh, I hate that. But anyway, you'd also have people that say, wow, that's a big dog. And I would have the opportunity to be the expert. I would have the opportunity to share information. If I got a little bit shaky, I'd have somebody that could balance me. If I fell, I wouldn't have to worry. If I have a trained dog, I'd tell the dog to back off. If I fell, he'd stand over me and protect me. This is the epitome of a working dog. But just like any police officer, firefighter, or service person, he can't carry his gun drawn and shoot everybody. But it's loaded.